Greetings, Deep Dive Podcast listeners. This is your boy, Sam Orem, coming at you with another episode of the Deep Dive Podcast. I've been telling you guys all season long that as we get toward the end of the year, it's going to get better and better. As we say in the South, it's going to get gooder and gooder. Well, tonight, guys, we have a special treat for you. I know we've been talking about this gentleman all week. We've been hyping him up all week, but this is a guy that you know, really needs no introduction, but I'm going to introduce him to you shortly. Before I do that, though, those of you who are listening in from all over the world, every week I have to tell you guys how much I appreciate what it is that you're doing in terms of supporting the podcast. You guys have tuned in from all over the world. Last week, Denmark was the number one country, believe it or not, even surpassing the numbers from the United States. So we certainly appreciate that love and support. And then for all of our loyal Deep Dive podcast listeners who's been here through all three seasons, thank you guys so much for your love and support. It means the world to me. I would continue to ask you guys to do me a favor to like, subscribe, download, and share this podcast because we're not just talking about entertainment. As we say every week, we're about empowerment. How can we make you a better you? How can we make the people around you better in what they're doing or at what they're doing? So. Let's continue to keep those things in mind, and uh, let's just get right into it, man. You guys know we've been talking about this all week, and I've challenged you guys all week to set up your, you know, um, your parties, to set up your your get-togethers, your gatherings. You know, we have tonight the new season of All the Queen's Men that is premiering tonight, season three. All you guys, some of you guys are already taking a look at it. Some of you in some of the other time zones, you'll get a chance to to see it a bit later. But I'm telling you guys, this is off the chain. If you saw the trailer, you know that it's off the chain. And so we're having all of these watch parties everywhere. People are just getting fired up. Well, I wanted to kick it off in my own way. And so this is why we have this guy here tonight. This is an incredible, incredible person. I got to tell you guys, and you know, I'm smiling because I have so much respect for this brother, for what he's doing, how he's empowering people. He fits right in with the Deep Dive podcast audience because he's all about empowerment. And we wanted to kick it off this tonight because with the premiere, season three premiere of All the Queen's Men, this is one of the, the lead characters in the particular show. Uh, his character is called Rayshawn, and he has done a brilliant job uh, in terms of his, his acting career, his modeling career. And he'll tell you more about himself, entrepreneur endeavors. But I got to tell you, man, this guy has a heart of gold. You know, he loves helping people. He loves having fun. You'll get a chance to see, you know, he loves having fun. But at the end of the day, it's about what can he do to empower people. So I won't hold him back from you any longer. I want to introduce to the entire Deep Dive podcast world, my brother, my boy, my friend, none other than Jay Marquise Johnson. Jay, what's up, bro? What up, Sam? How you doing, man? I appreciate you guys. <laughs> hey, man, that was quite the introduction, dog. You had <laughs> Man, I'm so excited to get a chance to have you on the Deep Dive podcast. I know it, it's funny, man. Um, I'd been earlier in the season, I'd been teasing different people, uh, different uh, episodes that we were going to have some top notch people toward the end of the season. And I wouldn't give any name, didn't want to name drop, but I couldn't wait, man. I couldn't wait to get you on to the podcast to just kind of share some things and share your energy and your love with everybody. But so again, thank you so much for agreeing to be a part of the Deep Dive Podcast world. What's going on with you, bro? What's going on? Tell tell us what's going on. Nothing, man. You know, I'm just enjoying my summer as a father. You know, uh, trying to keep my little one busy, man. That's it. You know, just getting ready for this 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 third season that's coming out on Thursday the 20th. I'm looking forward for the fans to see it, man. I appreciate the fans so much for all the support, and I just try to pour my all into this character and really tell this story. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. How is that pretty daughter of yours? How's she doing? <laughs> oh, man. Growing like a weed, man. She's eight years old now. Oh, dancing. Just, she got her own little fashion sense, man. She costs me a lot of money, but it's money well spent. So it's all good. <laughs> That's good, man. That's good. I know you were talking about how quickly they grow up, man. And, 
you know, I know that's the apple of your eye there, bro. Oh, man. It's so crazy, man, because, you know, I, I can always call back to the feeling of finding out I was going to originally be a father to, you know, the, the point of holding her and just like looking at her little baby eyes and stuff. To now, it's like she's rolling in baby eyes and be like, whatever, daddy, like how to think. So it's just, it's all the fun. It's all the love. It's just great to see, man. It's just really a beautiful thing to be a part of. Yeah, man. One of the things I really appreciate about you is, you know, how you take care of your daughter. Yeah. You know, I know, like I said, that's the apple of your heart, apple of your eye. And, you know, you've really gone above and beyond taking care of your daughter, uh, you know, doing the things so that she'll have a better future uh, than most of us have. You know, a lot of yeah. us, we had to grow up through adversity. Your story may maybe your story, but for me and a lot of other people, you know, we need that support yeah. uh, from a loving parent. I know for me, growing up in a single parent home with just my mom and my two sisters, so uh, I understand how important it is to have that parental support, man. So my hat's off to you for taking care of your daughter the way you do, man. I appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. You know, just also from my experience as well, I won't say that I, I grew up in a single parent household, although my parents were divorced, but I always had my father around. But just where I come from, just just kids my age and the kind of lack they felt, but then the kind of the safe place they felt with me and some of my boys over where I grew up at. Cause you know, we kind of had that dynamic and that big brotherhood and just a lot of people, believe it or not, credited us with, uh, you know, helping to save their lives in the city. Wow. South Central LA, you know, wow. really, you know and, uh, we just kind of allowed a lot of young men to escape, man. And, you know, or, you know, and so that's just why it's important. It's just something near and dear to my heart, you know, and I have an opportunity to, to, to break cycles into, into, I don't know, man. It's, just, it's heavy on my heart, but it's something that I got to do. You know, something I feel in my heart, and my bones. It's, I, I do it with a fire. And I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, again, man, that's one of the things I love about you, your passion for people. And, you know, you're genuine about it. Most people just kind of talk about it. But, you you know, you you actually are genuine about it. You really put your money where your mouth is in terms of helping people. And, and that's mm -hmm. great, man. And, you know, we talked about our parents and coming up. A lot of people don't know. But your father is NBA player, NBA great, Marcus Johnson. He played for Milwaukee Bucks, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Five times. Yeah. Uh, he's the first ever John R. Wooden Award winner, man. We're still trying to fight to get him in the Hall of Fame. But, you know, he's been a Hall of Fame father. So, I mean, I think that's a little better than that basketball Hall of Fame. So it's all good. There you go, man. Some of y'all remember Marcus Johnson, man. He was a, uh, he was a beast. <laughs> he definitely was a beast. He should be in the Hall of Fame, man. But, yes, sir. Yes, you sir. know, yeah, absolutely. Five-time All-Star. What was it like kind of, you know, growing up, your dad, a superstar, your brothers? You know, what was it like for you? How did you feel growing up in that kind of environment? Oh, man. So it's a little bit of both, you know, because you kind of get caught up into thinking that, their gift should be your gift in a sense. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, athleticism is just a, it's a crazy beast of a thing, man. Like, cause I actually just seen a tweet the other day where it was just like, what, who did you play? Who, what athlete did you play against in high school or whatever that you just knew that sports wasn't going to be for you. Right. And it's just like, you know, those guys are just like, they're just selected by God as like genetic super freaks. You know, and so I kind of got caught up in that and like just not knowing my way. But then you kind of realize, yo, I have my own gifts in this world and I kind of I, I can make my own contributions. And, you know, and that was my coming of age story in a sense. Right. Yeah. No, that's good, man. I mean, it is great to have someone like uh, your dad who. You know, yeah, kind of. I had to be great. I had to be great at something, though. That's you I'm had to be great. <laughs> it didn't have to be something. basketball, but it had to be. Something. Yeah, no, it had to be something. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, you've been doing that, brother. You know, and to have that support from your father as you're you going through and creating it, your you know carving your own path, which is good. You started yeah. out in modeling, though, right? Yeah, I started. Out, I started out as a model. Um, it's funny. I uh, I was just in Miami, pretty much hanging out. Then I kind of got what's called scouted by an agent. And then like three months later, I was living out in Miami for like a year and a half. So that was pretty fun. You know, I've got to work with like big brands like Perry Ellis, uh, Nike, um, the um, the department store Belts. I did a lot of work with Belts, you know, and right. I got to see pretty much all the United States, man. I got to, I got to spend some time in Asheville, North Carolina, which was incredible. And that's kind of inspired this like 
nature boy persona that I have now. Like I always got to be outside, always got to be in some grass, you know, like I hug right. trees now. Man. So it just opened my mind to a whole bunch of different, whole bunch of different stuff. Right. That's good, man. You know, the, the transition from the whole modeling world and then into the acting world. And, you know, so how, how was it, though, you know, when you growing when you were growing up? I know you had, you know, a couple of um, physical challenges that you were dealing with and just kind of grew through that. How was that whole process getting through health issues and challenges and all the way through modeling and ultimately acting? Oh, man. So uh, the health issue you speak of, I had leukemia as a. Uh, as a seven year old. And so, you know, dealing with the chemotherapy and all that, you know, I was bald. I was, you know, all that stuff. The meds I took, it kind of made me fat. It kind of slowed my, my, uh, I would call my growth processes up in a sense. So meaning like my puberty was stunted in a sense. So I was right. like, right. I was like 17 looking like a 12 year old little fat boy. And, uh, oh, okay. so, you know, things like that were kind of halted. Then I just kind of blossomed. But I mean, I think with that, it's kind of expanded and is my why for the reason I'm so empathetic and I care so much and I want to, and that's where my, my goal to help people are. And that's kind of how we realize you just never know what anybody's going through in a sense. So always be a blessing as, as best as you can, you know, always right. have a smile, always smile at somebody, you know, it's that how somebody's day is going, always make right. somebody feel important because you just never know. And uh, yeah, that really shaped that. And, you know, looking back on it, it's something I probably had to go through in order to be someone who helps make this world a better place in a sense, if that makes sense. And I'm not trying to put pressure on myself or act like I'm this messiah or something. But, you know, it, we, it all starts with one, you know, and God created us in his image. And I believe we all have that power to be a blessing to somebody. Right. Yeah. No, you're right, man. Every every champion started with a thought, started mm-hmm. with a notion, thought it started with an idea. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, you you've been known to have what's called a zest for life. Yeah. I'm 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 giving the uh political radio version. Yeah. In other words, you know, you're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> In a good way. Yeah. Yeah. You're crazy. You you yeah. know, you you wow. Yeah. <laughs> So that that I just say you got a zest for life. How about that? <laughs> I don't know. That's perfect, man. I I like to entertain, man. I like to make people laugh, you know. And it, you know, just start. And it started with one person, like man, seeing you, seeing you on my story really brightened my day. And I said, okay, well, they like it. I'm not gonna stop. And That's so, right. and then it just kept on growing from there. And it just means the world to me, man. Like especially now, we kind of just live in such a, a weird time and like and people have access to everybody's information now and, and, and everybody's business in a sense and everybody's commenting on everybody's personal lives and all that stuff. And like, I just kind of just want to get back to the fun of life, man. I just, I just want to laugh again, you know, like, right. I just, you know, cause uh, life is it, beautiful, but it's also tough, man. It ain't easy. Yeah. You know? And, I just try to make it as fun as I can, you know? I mean, yeah. I still go through stuff. I still deal with my stuff. But at the end of the day, man, all we, you know, we got to make a decision and that's to smile or cry. And I'm trying to encourage everybody to smile. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, you 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 do a great job of that, man. I know, <laughs> you know, all of us go through our stuff and there have been times where I'm like kind of mad at the world and mad yeah. at the day and frustrated, but then I either talk to you or see you or just, yeah. and, and I just start laughing for no yeah, reason. Man, you gotta, I just got to give you, this dude's so crazy, I just got to give you one of those once in a while, man. Yeah, that's good, man. You, you, you know, you, you had something with this, uh, what was it, a Popeye sandwich or something like that the other day? <laughs> yeah, I ain't going to even, I ain't going to tell the world. <laughs> I'm like, this dude is off the chain. <laughs> like, what's his problem? I, mean, I just be so in the moment too, man. I like. I know. You just remind me that I did that. Like, I'm. Just... Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm like, what is going on with this dude? He is crazy. But yeah, man. But you know what? That's a part of that zest for life. It made me laugh. Yeah. It made me laugh. Yeah. So and that's all I need, like, man. You know, that's all I need. That's all I need. Yeah. Okay. 
That's good, man. You know, I know that, uh, you know, kind of fast forwarding to the show, all the Queens men, how is that, man? How did you get cast and how did this whole thing come about working with Tyler Perry and that whole crew? So it's funny. So um, here's what I like to believe personally. Uh, it may or may not be true, but I'll just tell myself this. So okay. I actually originally auditioned to be on the Oval. Um, the, the, the part wasn't as big a part as Ray Sean was. And so I auditioned to be on the Oval, booked it. Three days later, the pandemic happens. World is canceled. Wow. So blah, blah, blah. I'm in mean, my feelings about that. End up not working on the Oval. Then like... Next year, whenever they start clearing up, I get this audition for this show. My manager's telling me, like, he, he has to remember you. He, he, he has to, he, I think he remembers you because, you know, they request you for this role. So they do my audition, do my thing, send it in. Two days later, it's like, yeah, we want them. Ticket, ticket, blah, blah, blah. I go out there, and it's just such a great time. But then somebody catches COVID. Somebody tests positive for COVID in, like, December of that year. We all got to go back home. Production shut down. We end up coming back like mid-January. Everything's cool. Everything works out. And just, um, I don't know, man. It's just it's just to stay in the course of my whole dream or an echo for anybody. Just stay in the course of your whole dream and, and just really believing it and doing the work, man. Doing the work to accomplish it, you know. And so being in that, being in that with such a talented cast and a talented ensemble, and just all around good people, man. Everybody from top to bottom is just such a good person. Affiliated yeah. with Tyler Perry Studios, man. And, and it's just amazing to, to be in the presence of that man, you know, not only because he's right. a billionaire, but he's like a self-made billionaire. You know, he did it his way. Like, you know, he had, you know, it's he had his contemporaries calling him this and that and blah, blah, blah for telling his stories and how he think how he saw things growing up. And right. basically they tried to discount it and, and kind of made him appear to be a joke. And it's just like, now who's a joke now? I got a studio with your name on it. Right. <laughs> like, like, yeah, I named I name one, name one of my studios after you, you know? Right. And so just to be able to work with him and get to know him on a personal level, man, to see the man he is and the artist that he is and the creative that he is, man. There was one scene where they made a mistake in the writing or whatever, and like on the spot, he just had to, he just... He just switches up everything, just switches up everything, just feeds us the lines. And it's just like, oh, dog, this dude is different. Like, wow. no, nah, he's just, no, nah, he's out of this world, man. He's out of this world. He's funny. He's real. You know, he like, he's just not one of them, one of them people. I don't, he just, oh man, it's just so hard to describe. I just got so much love and respect for him just based on, you know, because you would think somebody like that kind of would be untouchable in a sense. Right. But no, nah, he'd be really in the mix with us every single day. He comes he comes down to the dressing room from his big office up in the, the fourth floor, I believe. He'll come down, you know, hang out with us, talk, talk with us about things. He coaches us through what he needs us to do in, 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 the, in, the, in our scenes. Man, he's just right there with us all the time, man. And like, I can't say enough about him. I can't say enough about it. And I'm just so grateful that, you know, he essentially chose me, you know, and, and it's just something I'm never going to take for granted. And I hope that shows in how I played my role and come to prepare for my role as Ray Sean. Right. Now, that's incredible, man. I've heard story after story similar to that, you know, that the heart that this guy has. And, yeah. you know, he's one of the people that I, I have studied from afar. I haven't had an opportunity to work with him in any, any capacity, but I have studied what he is doing from afar. And, uh, man, like you said, it is impressive. It is incredible. He went through all kind of adversity. You know how yeah. people are. People talk about you. People try to bring you down, crabs in the barrel and all this other kind yeah. of stuff. But at the end yeah. of the day. You know, have your, the people that you look up to try to clown yeah. you, dog. Can you imagine? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, like, God. God, you just stay with it, man. Just stay off, man. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I know what you want to say with you. <laughs> but I understand. I understand. No, no. I mean, I'm I'm. I understand. I totally get it. 100%, man. And, you know, but, but kudos to what he's doing. Kudos to him for identifying and recognizing your talent, man. And, you know, you have a, a an, op, an obligation to be the best that you absolutely can be because there are other people who are looking at you 
you know, Jay, looking at Jay or looking at the character Rayshawn or whatever it may be, they're looking for that same type of inspiration, you know, that same type of love, that same type of, you know, what can you do? It's all that representation is so important, man. So what you're doing is admirable. And, you know, you're your version of that Tyler Perry vision, man. So that that's cool. That's deep, Sam. That's deep, dog. It's true, man. It it is so true, man. And that's why we have an obligation to, you know, do some of the things that we talk about, but do some of the things that people may not ever see, they may not know, but the people who need it, they yeah. get it. Yeah. They get it. You know, yeah, the people sure. who need it, they get it. Yeah. They feel it, you know. Yeah. So uh yeah, man, keep doing that. And sure. you know, how how is it working? How is it to work with my girlfriend? I know it. You know, I, I know it's coming. <laughs> I know coming. You know it's coming. I, 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 swear, I swear about that. I was like, man, we fair, bro. We just want to know about even dog. <laughs> uh-huh. I know. I you look. Let me tell you something. Let me just keep it real. Let me keep it 100. So my, the, the the most beautiful woman God that ever created is <laughs> Janet Jackson, in my opinion, right? But now, check this out. Janet been playing hard to get for your boy for yeah. so many years. Yeah. I've been in love with her since she was Penny on Good Times, right? So I've been in love with her forever. But now, man, I'm starting. I told you this before, but man. You got some feelings, you got this, some feelings for me, madam, huh? You got madam, some feelings. Madam. <laughs> <laughs> Madam <laughs> Eva, <laughs> that's 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 my new girl. Cause you know the the one common denominator with my type women is I, I like my woman to drink her forty out of the bottle. So <laughs> when you're talking about Madam, that's what we're talking about, right? Man, how is it working with Eva? Seriously, how is it working with my girl? <laughs> Eva's actually she is. So cool. And it's funny because uh, she's basically from the same area I'm from and it's, uh, down here in L.A. She's from L.A. And, uh, and so we had that connection. But no, she's so cool. And like, you know, when it's time to shoot, she's such, she's such a good leader, too. So like, mm. when, whenever her season's on the way, like she put everybody in a group chat mm. and she 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 get right in our stuff. And he's just right. like, come ready. Yeah. You know, and that's because. She's and that's because <clears throat> she watches the show to a sense where she's studying and breaking down everybody else's stuff. So she's mm-hmm. very, very attention to detail oriented. And so and she's, you know, she's breaking down beats. She's doing all this stuff and she's honest about it. But she does it in the suite. I mean, she ain't really like Madam like that. Like she ain't. Right. Yeah. Right, I mean, right. Although her eyes are very fierce. She learned that from Miss Tyra. Her eyes are super fierce and like, you know, it, it'll get a reaction out of you. And it do mm-hmm. be a little overwhelming to look at her in the eyes at times because they just so beautiful. But yeah. nah, she's a, an incredible leader. She's so hardworking, man. And it's, it's just it's a good time with her, honestly. You know, like she's another person who you would think would, in a sense, act untouchable in a sense, like almost kind of like they kind of have like a a, a, a God level to them or something but nah she's nothing like that and it's just it's incredible just to be around her and work with her you know and I've been lucky enough to have scenes with her and you know and she's always open to rehearsing with me and you know and here I am just you know this is my first episode my first day on the job you know right you know I'm just like, can, can we you mind if we rehearse a little bit she's like oh yes we need to like this <laughs> oh man this is great you know right so, right right <laughs> And she's just such a beautiful person inside and out, man. And she's so real. And she's so loud. And she, she's so South Central LA. I just love her so much, man. I love what she stands for. Like, she's, like, I mean, dog, she won America's Next Top Model, dog. Like, she's, Eva is an icon, you right. know? And, like, here I am, like, bumping show, like, having scenes with these two icons. Like, so I have a scene in the second season where I'm in the office, I'm in the office with Eva, and like that was like my coming, my 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 coming to Hollywood moment in a sense because the uh, the, the cat who plays uh Tommy O'Shea, he's like he's one of my best friends on the show. He comes up to me, he's like, "Hey man, you got Mr. Perry, you got Eva laughing, man. Keep doing what you're doing." So after you said right. that, I'm like, "Oh, okay, I'm locked in, dog." So right, right. <laughs> having them two laughing at me was just like 
the most gratifying feeling in the world, man. And, you know, I'm just so blessed and so lucky just to be able to share a room with them, man. Like, what? Like, right. They names be in the credits. Like, there, here go my little ass name. I'm sorry. Sorry for <laughs> Here go my little name in the credits, man. I'm just like, man, I live, I mean, it's just like, man, I spend like every five minutes peaching myself and then thanking God because the pinch hurt, you know? Like, it's real. Yeah. It's yeah. real. It is real, man. But you know what, bro? You know, and, I, and I've shared this with you, and I really mean it. You, you deserve to be in that room. You yes, know, sir. you deserve to be in the midst of that greatness. You yeah. know, God ain't making no, it, it's no accident. Then, yeah. You know, and everybody started somewhere. Tyler Perry started where you are. You yeah. know, Eva started where you are and everybody else yeah. for that matter. And, you know, so you're doing your thing, man. You deserve to be there. You deserve to be in the midst of that greatness. And it won't be very long before, you know, somebody will be speaking of you in these True. glowing terms because you're yeah. touching people's you're already doing it man you're already doing it the response that that we've had this week you know i can't wait to look at the numbers because i know they're going to be off the chart people really yeah, love Sam, me, brother. Me up, dog. You just doing i'm it. just you're telling you i know you're trying to make me feel good about myself dog i'm just telling you brother it, hey any anybody that knows me <laughs> anybody that knows me know that it's Sam good, good you know what I'm saying? Say, I'm going to keep it real. Yeah. If he like it, he like it. If he don't, yeah. he don't. But yeah. nah, man, I, I'm I'm serious about this, brother. You are truly, uh, you're touching people, man. You're touching people in ways that you don't even know. Yeah. You know, and the beautiful thing about it is this is still as much success as you have had, as much success as you are having, the best is yet to come. Yeah. You know, the best is yet to come. And if you look at, uh, how your life has evolved, mm -hmm. you know, having to go through the health challenges, overcoming those adversities to become model, actor, entrepreneur, et cetera. Right. Mm -hmm. Then you look at the fact that you were um, uh, potentially cast, going to be cast for the Oval. You know, yeah. you, you would audition for the Oval, but then COVID hit. Mm -hmm. You had to overcome that adversity and something yeah. greater came along in terms yeah. of all the Queens men. Now you look at where you are right now, bro. And let me tell you something with this, this actor strike and the writer strike and all of these things that are going on right now, you have a perfect opportunity to one more time, overcome some adversity mm -hmm. to continue on your path of greatness. This ain't nothing but an opportunity for you to do you. And one more notch on that adversity resume, huh? That overcoming resume, huh? One more notch, man, and you have done it time and time again. And I, I truly believe you're going to do that uh, this time around, man. And and so many things are, are just waiting for you. I think we may have talked about in the past the prayer of Jabez, yeah. and what the prayer of Jabez is. It it talks about all the blessings and things that are stored up for you, man. And you know we just got to go through life and attack life with vigor so that we can attain those things that are already there for us. Yeah, We don't have to worry about it. We don't have to sweat it. We don't have to worry about somebody taking something from us. All we have to do is do what we're supposed to do because the blessings are already there. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm getting myself fired up in this. And I ain't oh, even. Hey, let it, hey, let it burn. <laughs> let it burn in Jesus' name. Oh, burn. <laughs> I'm getting myself fired up, man. <laughs> no, no, you preaching, dog. You preaching. You preaching over here, dog. <laughs> I'm serious though, man. I'm 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 passionate about the success of people. And uh man, I, I truly admire what you've done and what you're continuously doing. I know what I wanted to ask you, man, but you know, within the show, I know um everybody, you know, they got all of these roles. Madam is running her harem of men or whatever you call it, and all these other kind of things. And yeah. you're like, you know, coming in and you're getting hazed so to speak. You're kind of getting hazed with some of the fellas, uh, but you don't back down. You ain't, yeah. you, at the end of the day, it's like, okay, I may be new to the game, yeah. but I know, you know, I know what I'm doing. What's, what did, was that whole Rayshon character like? He's an interesting dude, man. He's a, <clears throat> just a kid trying to fit in, you know, trying to find his way in life. Um, That's a perfect explanation. I'm sorry. As a kid trying to find his way in life and fit in, you know, and just just belong to something, you know, and uh, and my character, you know, like I, I um, 
So my character, I guess you could say he's a part of the LGBTQ community in a sense. I don't know how to explain it, mm-hmm. but but I've just drawn that from uh, just I don't know. Just, I and you know my my um my inspiration just came from humanity, and I didn't mean to put that under one umbrella, you know. But I look at everybody as a complete and total human being, and so this kid is playing. This kid is a human being is looking to fit in and belong to something, you know, and, and right. just willing to do whatever it takes to, you know, feel a part, you know, and feel love and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, I think you hit right on it, man. The first words you said, he's just trying to fit in, yeah. you know, and the interesting thing about that is what we were just talking about, how art imitates life. So, yeah. you know, your character is, is an inspiration for people who are just trying to fit in. Yeah. You know, just trying to advance in life, just trying to feel that love or trying to feel acceptance, mm-hmm. you know. So, yeah, man, that's 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 deep, brother. Well, I tell you what, you you, you did a hell of a job with your character, yeah, with the show, that. everything, man. It's you know, it, it is to be applauded. I love the show. My um my niece, Keisha, shout out to Carmela. She uh, she kind of turned me on to the show. And, uh, you know, I'm like, OK, OK, OK. Okay, but then she started. <laughs> I was like, okay, all right, I'll check it out. It did, uh, yeah, start, or you know, start kind of following the show. But I, I do like the writing. The writing is brilliant. Yeah. You know, you you guys as artists are, are brilliant. You're doing a great job with that. And so, what what do you foresee the future um, holding for you? What what does the future hold? Oh um, man, the future holds for me, man. I'm either gonna be in somebody's DC or somebody's Marvel. I'm gonna be a superhero. Um, I'm gonna <clears throat> hopefully be able to parlay that into becoming a successful businessman. You know, just being able to open opportunities for a bunch of people, a bunch of different people, especially people who are like me, who are former athletes. And so, I, so to touch on that, you know, I'm a, I mean, I'm a former college athlete, but I mean, I'm just one of those people that kind of. <laughs> didn't know any other way other than sports for a long time. Mm-hmm. And so I just want to be able to to help young men and women who are kind of along that same path, trying to get more in touch with who they are and other things that they like. Cause you know, you can get trapped into that because I mean, be honest here, not everybody's going to make it to the pros, man. And like, I don't, and I don't think people really appreciate and understand how good those cats that make it to the pros are, you know, right. And, you know, and there's nothing to say about anybody who doesn't make it, but there's other means in this in this world and there's other ways you can impact people in this world. And so my goal is to, you know, put it I'm gonna put it down on paper and just kind of just start something that helps people with the transition from from athletics to the real world, in a sense, you know, and them still being able to use their strengths in order to make it to be successful, you know, and to make a living and things like that. Right, right. Yeah, I noticed you said, you know, you're going to put it on paper. You you, you probably knew what I was going to say, huh? <laughs> put it on paper. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, you go ahead and be proactive. I ain't mad at sir. you. <laughs> yes, sir. yes, sir. I hear you. I hear you, Sam. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. You know, uh, I, we'll wrap up. But before we do that, there's a couple of things I just kind of wanted to get your input on because we're going to I'm going to do a podcast soon about, you know, men's mental health, especially in the black community. Yeah. Uh, black men, you know, their whole mental health uh, situation. I think it's an epidemic of people. I say men, but men, women, whoever it may be who are challenged with mental health issues. And yeah. I know, you know, you kind of spoken about this in, in, in different platforms. Yeah. What are your thoughts in terms of where we are or where we need to be as it relates to our mental health? Oh, man, I just think we're just, and I can say this because it's something I had to grow out of, you know, like we're just so concerned about what everybody else thinks of us and like, and just like act like we don't know who we are as individuals. So with that said, like, we kind of put this 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 barrier to ourselves where there's things that we may need, dog. Like there's things like sometimes you may want to hear, you may want to tell your homeboy you love him, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you can tell anybody you love them. We all need to hear that. I need to hear it. You know, right. and it's just certain things that we've kind of just kind of messed ourselves up with in that sense. And I think it starts from 
from there, which is the worrying about what other people think, man, and just like in, in being afraid to be vulnerable because it looks a certain way. And it's just like, man, that's not, you know, it's not what that means. You know, right. it ain't what that means. And, you know, right. it's okay to ask for help. And it's okay to sometimes cry if you want to cry. And you right. can smile in pictures. You could be, you could be happy. You know what I mean? You could be, yep. you could be carefree and all this stuff. That don't mean nothing about who you like or who you are or nothing like that. We get so caught up into that. And it's just like, honestly, like, I call myself a weirdo forever thinking like that. But I mean, I get it though, because this is kind of what we grew up in. And it's just right. this thing that this notion that we got to be hard and this and that and that. And it's also, I think is most important is like, you know, we don't mind our business and we concern ourselves with things that everybody else is doing. And we're not focusing in our, we're not focusing on ourselves. We're not doing mm-hmm. what makes us happy, especially, mm-hmm. especially men. Dog. And I don't want to hear nothing about it because we got the highest suicide rates. Like we right. killing ourselves because we're yep. unhappy. And it and it bothers the heck out of me. It really right. bothers the heck out of me because it's something that's so simple as dog, you could have called me. We could have we could have talked for two hours, three hours. So I want to keep you here. But now I'm just finding out you just took a whole bottle of extension trying to kill yourself because you weren't happy and you didn't want to reach out. And right. for what? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get all fired up about it, but you know, there's something like that that's just it's just so crazy to me that we're still going through. And like, but with that said, I'm, I try to be a person on social, like, man, I got fans now, dog. So now I can reach out, you know, and ask them how their mental health is doing. And now I'm able to talk them through certain things. I'm able to be, be an ear for them, you know, and they, Mm -hmm. they not getting that. And it just sucks, man. It really sucks. But I mean, now I'm going to use this platform to go on and say, if you ever need an ear, J Marcus Johnson is here for you at all times. Mm -hmm. dog. I'm not going to lose nobody to something like that. The world life is already hard enough as it is. For you to be harder on yourself about a whole bunch of stuff that you can't control. Right. See, now you preaching. <laughs> See, man. You no, got it. Man. You, man. Don't put me in that mode, dog. I know, right? <laughs> no, nah, man. It's all good. I, I appreciate that because I know you're passionate about, you know, uh, mental health and people just, uh, you know, just living life, man. There's so much stress out there yeah. in life. It is so much stress out there. And the one thing that I can appreciate and always appreciate about you, like I said earlier, you put a smile on people's face, Yeah, you know, and that can go a long way. And you know, I tell people in, in one voice in my company that, you know, you want to treat everybody as if they have a sign around their chest or on their chest to say, make me feel special. Right. Yeah. That's how we want. Yeah. That's how we want to go about life to treat yeah. people in that manner. And uh, you do that, man. You personify, uh, you know, just giving people an opportunity to to be free, stress free and just to make them smile, not just yeah. through your arts, but just through who you are. Yeah. And I've always appreciated that about you, my brother, and I continue to do so. So thank you again so much for being who you are, because yeah. that's important. For the people oh, no, who follow I learned from you, dog. You be, you, be, <laughs> you be encouraging it, man. You encourage it. I'm gonna keep doing it, dog. Yeah, hey, there you go, man. We gotta, we gotta each one teach one. We gotta yes, watch sir. out yes, for sir. each yes, other, sir. man. And I'm yeah. learning a lot. Yeah, yes, sir. So we gotta keep doing this, man. Well, look, I'm not gonna, um, you know, take up too much more of your time, man. I just really appreciate you uh, joining us on the Deep Dive Podcast. It really does mean more to me than you can even imagine, you know, having somebody uh, of your caliber, someone who is uh, so loved and followed around the globe, to have them as a part of our platform. I know we're boys and I know we brothers, but at the end of the day, you are uh, what we say you are, you know, and uh, you are truly a leader in your own right, man. You are truly inspiring so many people. And I, for one, could not be more happy to be on this journey with you, man. And, uh, you know, I know that, like I said, the best is yet to come. I'm encouraging you to just keep doing the things that you're doing, man. Keep putting smiles on people's faces. Keep uplifting people at the highest level. And, you know, continue to study your craft and, you know, sitting in these rooms, as you call it, with these icons until someone saying, hey, look, I'm, I sat in that room with J. Marcus Johnson, an icon in this industry. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do, but he was so nice and so warm and so open that he really uh, shared his heart with me. And that's where you're going, brother. So kudos to you, my friend. 
I appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. Y'all make sure I go pick up Mindset of a Champion. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. <laughs> you so yeah. crazy for that, but it's so good. Yeah, man. Thank you so much, man. And I got to get you that fair coffee, too. I got to get oh, you no. that fair yeah, coffee. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I gotta, let's not hold up on that. All right. I, right, right, right. I, I, need right now. I need my coffee. <laughs> yeah, oh. gotta get that fair coffee to you. So hey man, I appreciate you again, brother, for uh uh joining us. Any last words, anything you want to share before we close out? Uh last word would be, man, just just try to go about life, like Sam said, making somebody say making somebody feel special, man. Just Ask how people are doing, man. Make them feel seen. I mean, dog, just tell somebody thank you. You know, just live a life of gratitude, man. And I promise your life will exponentially get greater, you know. And so that's it, man. Just love one another. That's it, man. That's- Absolutely, man. I appreciate that, brother. Thank you again so much. Thank you to all of the listeners all over the world. Uh, you know, there would be no Deep Dive podcast without all of you. So. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, download, and share this podcast. Those of you who are in the middle of your watch parties, I know you're probably having a good time, probably look it up by now. Uh, Some of you may be kind of tuning in, depending upon the time zone you're in around the world. But let's just continue to follow this brother and support this brother, man. This is a good brother. You want to support this brother in every aspect of everything that he does. You know, support his social media, support his art, support whatever he is doing, because this is truly one of the champions, man. We talk about the mindset of a champion. This is truly one of the champions. So, Jay, thank you, my brother. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Love you, too, man. You take care. God bless each and every one of you. And I'll see you on the beaches of the world.